Okay, so in this lesson we're going to create a basic ASP uh, website now using what's called a code behind um, file and we're also going to add a few a few more things. This application will actually ask you for your name and your age and it will display your name, your age in dog years. Okay, that's all it's going to do. So let's go. I'm going to create file, new, website, and it's going to be an empty website. I want to create it from scratch. Visual C, ASP.NET, empty website. Okay, and uh, I'm going to call it website 8. You can, you can call it whatever you want. Okay, now, this is going to take a while, and it's going to provide me a couple of things. It's going to provide me a whole directory structure with a file called default.aspx and inside that a file for what's called the code behind a C class associated to that file. So let's see how that works. So here I'm going to, this is my solution with my project with some configuration that we're not going to see now. I'm going to right click here, add and then I'm going to create a new default web, web page. So I'm going to add, add a new item, or I could add a web form. Either one, add a new item web form or just a web, web form directly. I'm going to call it default. Default is the first web form that gets loaded in my application. So it's going to be default. And let's look at what happened here. I create a little web page with a form. You can see here there's a form that does nothing, there's no elements in that form, that has a couple of, of uh, things up here, page directives, uh, the page directive, the kind of language that I'm going to uh, program this in, the code file, this is important, this is the C class, the C sharp class that's going to be behind my code, and we'll see what that means, okay? And then there's more stuff over here, and here it's defaults. So, Let's first create the web the web page. I'm going to create a, a form, right, with two elements. One, so first, after the body, I'm going to say, enter your name and age. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm going to have an input of type text. It's going to be for the name, OK? <coughs> ID is going to be name. And then I'm going to add this thing, run at server. By saying run at server, what I'm, what I'm saying is that for whatever C Sharp class that I have behind this page, name is going to be an actual variable that I can use. Okay, so it's going to be run at server, and there's nothing there, that's it. And then here I'm going to have another input of type text to the ID is going to be H, and then run at server. Close that. And then finally, a submit button. That's an input of type is submit. Um, that's going to be called um, go. I'm going to call it go. And then here's, here's an interesting thing. When you submit something on a form, I want actions to happen. I want things to happen. And what I want to happen, I'm going to define in my code behind file, in my C-sharp class, this C-sharp class, okay? So when I click Submit, I want it, uh, well, first run at server. I want this to call a specific method. So I'm going to say on server click. On server click, I'm going to call the... Uh, uh, the write message method in my class, in my C-sharp class. Okay, my C-sharp class, I don't still have it, right? But I'm going to create a method called write message, and it's going to sort of um, help me here. So I could have called this method anything. I just call it write message, because what it's going to do is it's going to write a message. It's going to say, hello, and whatever your name is, and it's going to say, your age in dog years is something something, okay? So enter your name and age, and whoops, and I will t 
tell you how many dog years that is. Okay, that's what it does. So after the form, I'm going to create in the same page a little tag here, right? I'm going to call it a message. I also want to be able to reference this from my C Sharp class, so it's going to be a run at server. Okay. Where the message is going to go. And that is my web page. So if you want to, uh, th there's, so this this is going to be the web the web page here. Now, as you can see, I am relying heavily on when I click submit, I'm relying on this method, right message, which doesn't exist in this class, which I can't see. So let's look at the default ASPX. Um, <clears throat> item, we expand it here and we see that there is the C sharp class default that ASPX.CS. So that's my code behind class. This class will get called, it's associated to my default.ASPX page. What I'm going to do with this class is I'm going to create, I'm not going to touch this uh, page load method. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to create another method, protected void and I'm gonna call it write message which is the same name that I set the submit button to call write message and here I have to put two arguments one of type object called sender and one of type event args call e so the first argument tells me which object called this method and this is any other parameters that it might have passed so now I need to bring the age that I requested in the default.aspx in here in my website you see there's age I need to bring that as a variable here I need to be able to see it and I can see it if I type age it is there okay I can access it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have int my age equals age dot value now this is this is a string h.value is a string. I need to convert it to an int. So in order to do that, I will do convert and then to, whoops, wrong place, to do this here. Convert to int 32 and then close parentheses. That is going to convert the h into my h. Now, <clears throat> to compute it in dog years, dog years is basically my age divided by 7. Now because if I divide by 7 it can be you know it doesn't have to be an, uh, an integer so I'm gonna make this dog years a double. Alright now I've converted my age divided by 7 that's the dog years and then I'm gonna put a little message on the span, right? The span tag here, span ID message. On the field, this again, because it's run at server, I have this message variable which is of the HTML object type. So I'm going to put a message there. I'm going to say message dot inner HTML equals, and then I can just put any string with HTML in it. So I can say, whoops, I can say hello and then the name and the value that's the text tag name and the string value that it contains plus I'm gonna put a little tag BR so that it goes underneath plus uh, in dog years you are and then the H in dog years which will be this variable dog years here right so dog years and that's it so this method write message will get the age from the form will convert it into dog years and will put it back in the message it will put the name back again and in dog years you are whatever age you are in dog years so we're gonna save and we're gonna run this and we'll see our web page 
work with some server-side code. This code resides on the server. This is not client-side code. So here it is. It's running on localhost port 52733. That's our testing port when it's not deployed, but let's see how it, how it looks. And here it is. So I'm going to enter my name. My name is going to be Jennifer. And how old I am? I am, say, 32 years old. I'll submit this. And it says, hello, Jennifer. In dog years, you are 4.57 years old. OK, there's some formatting issues here. You can fix them. But this is basically what we're doing with a code behind with a web page, a default .exp, and its code behind. Stay tuned. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to do stuff that you can do only on the server. This here, you could have achieved the same thing with JavaScript. But there are some things that you cannot do with JavaScript, and we're going to talk about those when we go into what's called the global ASAX file.